hey hello everyone welcome to the today's lecture so today i'll be discussing the gate question paper of 2018 and i'll be discussing the first five questions as you know i have been discussing the gate question papers and i discuss five questions in each class and i do only organic chemistry and my approach would be to look at each question as a way to learn organic chemistry not just to solve it and to understand the whole concept say uh, behind and all the background of about that specific topic okay so moving to the first question the first question says the major product formed in the following reaction is so what you are seeing is there is an alkene here and you have a ketene here and nothing is here nothing is there basically it means it's heat uh, little amount of uh, heat is good enough even a uh, zero degree celsius is a heat because compared to minus 10 it is hotter right so unless they specifically say photochemical you understand it is heat reaction so what is the product form so whenever you see ketone ketene sorry not ketone ketene ketene means ketone is there plus alkene is there and the same carbon is involved then it will undergo 2 plus 2 thermal addition i will explain to you what do i mean by this sentence but look at the product all the product are very similar so basi basically they are asking about the residual selectivity and stereoselectivity of 2 plus 2 so it was understood this is the first question so generally first questions are easy uh, they are one mass question later two mass question comes so this is expected that 2 plus 2 thermal addition you know and we'll see later okay uh, moving down so why uh, generally if you take normal alkenes not ketene 2 plus 2 addition is never thermally allowed symmetrically it's not allowed you have to do it photochemically what happens is when you are reacting one of the alkene has to uh, one of the alkene uh, alkenes homo has to react with one of the alkenes lumo right that's how reaction happens so homo has homo is highest occupied molecular orbital so they have electrons and lumo is lowest unoccupied molecular so they do not have electron so the one which has electron gives electron to which does not have and that's how addition takes place that's how we explain using frontier molecular orbital now understand alkene alkene basically has two carbons right so it has two p orbitals so if two p orbitals are there how many molecular orbitals it should have it should have two molecular uh, pi, two pi molecular orbitals so these are the two pi molecular orbitals this is psi 1 and psi 2 star so psi 1 is bonding molecular orbital psi 2 star is bond anti bonding molecular orbital because basically this one had one electron this one had one electron so two electrons are there so both the electrons come in psi 1 so it is the bonding and this one is vacant so it is anti bonding right and uh, so this psi 1 is homo because uh, there are only two orbitals but this is the orbital which has highest energy with occupied orbitals and this one is lowest unoccupied molecular orbital so here because there are no electrons this is unoccupied molecular orbital now interaction has to happen so homo of one of the alkene has to interact with lumo of other alkene so look here at this homo here you are having this top positive top positive down negative down negative right but here lumo what has happened so this is what it is homo top positive down negative top positive down negative but in lumo what happens top positive but the neighboring one top is negative so positive and negative so what happens imagine if they interact so this minus can interact with minus right symmetrically they have to be same for bond to form so minus can interact with minus but can minus interact with plus addition has to happen in the same phase then only uh, it will be allowed so this cannot happen so it is not allowed but under photochemical conditions what happens the homo will, uh, the electron in the homo gets excited and electron will come here then what happens the lumo becomes homo so lumo, then the lumo becomes homo and then uh, yeah and then the homo in the excited state is exactly like the lumo of other so positive is there negative is there here also positive is there here also negative is there and therefore under photochemical condition it is allowed minus can meet minus minus can meet minus plus can meet plus and that's how reaction is symmetrically allowed but thermally it's definitely not allowed but in ketene it is possible wonderful it undergoes 2 plus 2 thermal addition 
how does it happen so basically on this carbon and this carbon bond has to be formed right what is the hybridization of this carbon this carbon you see it is having two p or two pi bonds that means two p orbitals were unhybridized so if two p orbitals are unhybridized that means only s and p were hybridized right so it is sp hybridized orbitals where uh, uh, this carbon is having sp hybridization and therefore it has two p orbitals which will be perpendicular to the plane so it since it is sp hybridized you can see the shape will be linear so if this is the uh, um, plane of the molecule then what happens one p orbital will be perpendicular other p orbital will be perpendicular like this that means it is coming from outside the board and going inside the board right so it is coming from outside and then going inside and uh, so that is also perpendicular so if i draw so if i draw uh, home of alkene is here so we are having plus plus and plus uh, sorry plus minus and plus minus but as lumo what happens it is plus minus and then minus plus right so interaction cannot happen it will be symmetrically not allowed we are not concerned about c double bond o because bonding has to happen on alkene but what happens is there is another p orbital which is perpendicular and if bond has to be formed this both have to be in same sign so we are having minus minus and plus plus we could have put other way also now let us look what can happen homo has come for the alkene not ketene so it is having both lobes of same symmetry on the same side so plus plus on the same side minus minus on the same side here what has happened this is lumo so homo of the alkene and lumo of the ketene interacts so we have shown you the mol i have shown uh, shown you the molecular orbital picture so lumo had a side psi star 2 was the lumo so uh, plus top is plus the next has to be minus so now this cannot interact but what happens there is another p orbital which is perpendicular so now if they attack like this so they are next to each other perpendicular to each other so now this p orbital plus can interact with plus and this plus can interact with plus so these two orbitals are not interacting you understand the another p orbital which has come you can imagine something like from the ketone uh, part another p orbital which is left but finally it's on the this carbon so this p orbital and this p orbital they both in and they both interact and therefore it is thermally allowed please remember this it is because of two perpendicular p orbitals on the carbon where, where which is ketene which has double bond with carbon also and with double bond o also so that's how they react interact so this perpendicular and this perpendicular orbital generally bonds are formed then two orbit two orbitals have to be parallel to each other then only interaction happens but here one of them is uh, in like this another one is not like this parallel but rather perpendicular and then they are interacting and that's how bond formation happens so this till here it was very simple so now we have to talk about the regio selectivity and stereo selectivity right so now uh, you understand this so this was the alkene so what we said homo of alkene is interacted with is interacting with lumo of ketene so homo means highest occupied molecular orbital so here electrons needs to be there so that's what guides so it will attack it doesn't accept electron it attacks alkene goes and attack remember this because alkenes homo is interacting whereas that accepts electron ketene because that's lumo is interacting so they do not have electron so this is what will interact so when you have pumping group imagine you are having pumping group so if you have pumping group so electrons will come here so what happens basically here is the negative polarity on the carbon on which donating group is there there you don't have negative polarity on the pdc on the neighboring carbon you have negative polarity and on that carbon because that has negative so it is losing kind of electron so it gets the positive polarity here so that makes our job very simple and now let's look at ketene now ketene what happens uh, uh, here uh, oxygen is there so of course if oxygen there it will pull the electron so here you get negative so uh, because here it comes negative so it will be positive so what happens this positive will interact with this negative always opposite charges attract so now that makes our job very simple so what happens 
this will go because here we saw it has negative polarity and we saw here it has positive polarity so this bond goes and attacks here and this one comes and attacks here and therefore you're getting some kind of this reaction so here stereochemistry were not changed so two hydrogens away from the viewer and what you can see the uh, uh, regio selectivity regio means region so opposite to your alkyl uh, alkyl this methyl group you are having c double bond o and neighboring to methyl group you are having two chlorine bonds so let's go up and see which of them are like that uh, so you see here here what is happening is opposite to uh, methyl group you are having two chlorine and next is cdl1 o so that's definitely not the product in b what is happening opposite to the uh, methyl you are having ketone and next to this one is 2 cl so b can be definitely answer similarly c can be answer and d cannot be the answer right so um, that's what it is um, regio selectivity is definitely confirmed now we need to talk about the stereo selectivity right so three dimensionally how the up, uh, attack happens now you understand attack has to happen on this carbons right which side is more uh, now ketene has to approach now ketene can either come from uh, front of the screen or it can come from behind the screen right whichever is less hindered from there attack will happen this carbon is basically sp3 hybridized even this carbon is sp3 hybridized so uh, you can see very clearly this bond is in the plane and let's imagine this bond is in the plane right so one has to be away from the viewer one has to be uh, towards the viewer we are talking about the rest of the two bonds for this carbon these carbons so one bond which is away from the viewer is h that means what is towards the viewer is this cyclic group right this alkyl group of the cyclopentane so of course from the front it is more hindered and behind it is less hindered because hydrogen hydrogen is smallest atom smallest substituent possible so behind is definitely much much less hindered than front and therefore attack happens from behind and therefore you get uh, like this product uh, what i have said is there so see that's why i have drawn this dot dot so it is coming from behind and then reaction is happening so we told before also the this one is what attacks so this one pumps electron this is homo this one goes and pumps electron and then this one comes here and that's how bond is formed and therefore uh, it is coming from behind so what happens it will push this hydrogen front it will push this methyl front so you are having ch3 front and you are having methyl front so the answer is c right good uh, so moving on to the next question it says the major product formed in the following reaction now this is a named reaction okay it's hans pyridine synthesis and uh, this is directly i think i have saw it in um, cleared in this question okay so uh, you are having two equivalents of active methylene group you know this carbon if this carbon is there this is active methylene group why because beside this carbon you are having c double bond o here also it is having c double bond o so if you uh, remove a proton from here you can see here carbon has valency of 4 so two bonds are already there so two more bonds will be there so hydrogens are there if you remove any of the proton you get negative charge on this carbon and that negative is stabilized this side also and this side also therefore it is called as active methylene methylene is basically ch2 and it is active because it is acidic so that group is there and you can see here there is a aldehyde very clearly this negative charge will go and attack here and then in the process ammonia also interacts and this is a tough little bit tough mechanism unless you have seen immediately if you think you'll be able to draw it will be tough so named reactions and specifically when they talk about something like hetero molecule synthesis so we have to mark some of them okay so this is the hands period in synthesis and i found a lot of information about this molecule so it's a hands period in synthesis and here in this case no dihydropyridine derivative is formed why it is dihydropyridine let us look at it okay uh, so answer is one of them c or d because i saw from um, this one so this is normal pyridine you see because pyridine has a benzene ring 
and one of the place it has nitrogen it is substituted pyridine but in this product uh, c or d will be product which we will see later but basically you see here it's not pyridine normal um, its aromaticity is lost and uh, uh, if this group was not uh, if, even if this group is there you can see here one hydrogen has been added here and another hydrogen has been added here so it is two hydrogens which has added uh, so it is called as dihydropyridine derivative because so many other substituents are there so this dihydropyridine uh, derivative no it is calcium channel blocking agent and therefore it is valuable for um, as a drug against heart diseases so this mechanism involves these following steps first step is aldol reaction between aldehyde and keto ester so aldehyde is the most common reaction which you have been studying from a class 11th and then michael addition michael addition you know it is 1 4 addition when you have alpha beta unsaturated ketone attack happens on alkene now alkene is a soft center so uh, soft position when you attack it is called as michael addition it's 1 4 addition followed by addition of ammonia so if these three steps you remember you'll be able to do it so just uh, remind yourself aldol michael and ammonia right and finally cyclization which you'll be able to see for yourself right so you have to remember these three steps then you will not do a mistake so this is what happens if you look here um, it's quite simple this oxygen is there from here one hydrogen is lost right from here one hydrogen is lost and therefore basically h2 is lost one second no, i'll just get a mouse uh, my mouse is not working very well um, just one sec please Yeah. So what happens? Uh, this hydrogen, this oxygen, and this hydrogen. So basically, H2O is lost. So a bond is forming here. A H2O is lost here, and then here also basically, uh, these two hydrogens and one of the oxygen is lost. That is again H2O loss. And apart from that, where intermolecular intramolecular reaction happens, and where another oxygen is lost. We will see in the mechanism. Okay. Just one more second, I just need a pad. <coughs> yeah, so let's go to the steps. Uh, so here you saw that uh, they said base and uh, the pH of the solution was 8.5. So 8.5 is basically basic media. So that basic media is good enough. It removes the first proton and you get a negative charge. Remember still, if you are able to put some group on this carbon, that other proton will be again basic. Now why this proton is removed? Because this negative charge is stabilized. It can be stabilized this side or it can be stabilized even this side. So that's what is happening and you are getting this group. So on this carbon, the negative charge is that that negative charge is attacking this aldehyde so that's what is your aldol reaction you know that in aldol reaction you need aldehyde which has aldehyde or ketone, ketone which has alpha ch bond on the alpha carbon hydrogen has to be there and that hydrogen goes and attacks the carbonyl carbon that's what is aldol reaction so exactly same thing is happening so here beside this aldehyde you are having this ch bond so removing the CH bond, you are getting a negative charge and that negative charge goes and attacks another aldehyde group. So it is not, uh, it is uh, cross aldol condensation. You need a second uh, aldehyde, fine. So that's what is happening and you get this uh, transition state. That's very simple. Now you understand this proton is still acidic. Why? Because now something has been added and if you remove this proton, this negative charge will be stabilized here and it will be stabilized here also and therefore this O minus is there, O minus is the strongest base present right now and it will immediately take this proton and you get this negative charge here. And now in the basic condition, basically it's 8.5. So in water, you know, the only base present is OH minus. So that's what it is. Uh, this will come uh, and in basic condition, this OH minus can live because they're in equilibrium. So OH minus attacks, OH minus leaves. So it's like that. So this negative charge will come here this negative charge will come here and this OH minus is lost 
and you are getting this alpha beta unsaturated ketone you can see here alpha beta unsaturated ketone sorry i mm, this mouse is not working very well um right so now this was the first step what we said is uh, first step was aldol condensation second thing what did i say second step was michael addition so michael addition you know it is 1 4 addition so it is 1 2 3 and 4 is alpha beta unsaturated ketone so on this it will attack what will attack so again because in the starting metal if you remember the reactant there were two uh, equivalents of uh, active methylene group that is uh, keto ester and one molecule of your aldehyde so this will interact with the next extra molecule of your uh, aldehyde ester um, in one group that is active methylene group okay so now what happens is an base is solution still basic so this removes proton and you get a negative charge on carbon right that is stabilized now this carbon negative charge is a soft nucleophile why soft because carbon is not electronegative so its lobe is very big because it cannot hold the electron close to itself so it's very big so it is easy to polarize you can pull it polarize basically you can pull it uh, um, so you are you can polarize this easily so it is a soft base so it will go and attack the soft center polarize you know something like uh, a society gets polarized based on religion based on different factors so which you can easily pull that is polarizable so similarly here it's alpha beta unsaturated ketone so on this carbon this negative charge goes and attacks here and this goes up here and you get like that and then um let's see what i have done so this is what i have drawn on top this is what i have drawn on top and then this negative uh, this is forming bond with the aldehyde so this is that bond which is forming and then the benzene ring is here benzene ring is here this hydrogen is here this hydrogen is here and then the rest of the molecule is there so rest of the molecule is here and then um just let me rub it to make it more neat so this bond has gone up and c uh, c is oxygen is getting negative charge so that's what we have seen here double bond here negative charge on this and this comes back and picks up proton and you are getting this this is fine so what was the last step now the last step was addition of addition of ammonia now this carbon and this carbon both are exactly equivalent so it doesn't matter but remember this ammonia will not attack ester ammonia will only attack ketone why this is what organic chemistry you have to remember these are the subtle concepts which you have to know uh, it is simple also so because oxygen has lone pair of electron on the ester you can see here so this pumps electron and it goes up so what happens basically here it is getting more electron so its hunger for electron has reduced its electrophilicity its love for electron has reduced whereas in ketone no such thing is there so oxygen is pulling electron so it is lot of positive charge here so ammonia will go and attack here not ester please remember that and you are getting this and whenever you are having something like uh, vicinal diol or something like vicinal position uh, nh2 and oh immediately one of them leaves oh minus leaves because oh minus is better leaving group than nh2 minus why oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen so it can stabilize negative charge nitrogen cannot stabilize negative charge because much less electronegative okay so what happens this nitrogen lone pair comes here and this one cuts out and you are getting this bond you are getting this double bond and then what happens is now this proton you know is acidic why because it can be stabilized this side also it can be stabilized this side also so next step is this proton is lost and you are getting double bond here and then a uh, lone pair of nitrogen goes and attacks here this comes up and you are getting this and then this proton again like previous proton this proton is again acidic because it is can get uh, stabilized this side and so it is lost here and this oh minus is lost and you are getting this product so d is the product dihydropyridine derivative okay i'm uh, moving on next question is the major product of the following 
intramolecular cyclo addition reaction so now this is very simple just recently we talked about we said 2 plus 2 thermally it's not allowed but 2 plus 2 addition is photochemically allowed so we talked about all the homo lumo so i don't think there's any need to talk about it once again so these are the two things homo and lumo so this will go and interact and uh, uh, maybe little bit regio selectivity we need to understand so let's see um, see here this is what pumps electron right so attack happens from this side okay and this goes and attacks here and you're getting this so this is the d is the answer this was very very simple question this was interesting question you know it took me some time to understand uh, all uh, to me what it was clear is is k plus and h minus and i knew this si me3 this silicon uh, si me3 trimethyl silane this acts as a hard acid you know it almost acts like a proton so it will interact with hard base now h minus is a very soft base so definitely what i was thinking initially was not right answer because you know h minus hydride proton is very small hydrogen without its electron you understand this there is only nucleus very small but hydrogen with two electrons very small but it is having two electrons so size is very big and therefore it is very strong base but very weak nucleophile so it's a soft base so h minus cannot attack silicon remember but silicon has strong strong affinity for um, electronegative bases because they are hard bases f minus you understand so f is there so fluorine is very electronegative so it holds electron very close to itself so it is a very very uh, hard base similarly on oxygen negative charge is there so that also is hard base so this is one of the reaction which i saw um, um, imagine if you're putting hf so this h oxygen takes this proton and become oh2 plus and then f minus is a hard nucleophile very strong interaction with silicon it immediately goes and attacks silicon this bond comes here and this gets out and you are getting this product so here let us see what can happen so here si is there if um, kh is a very strong base it is not at all nucleophilic it's a very powerful base. it will remove this proton you get o minus then o minus will interact but to interact they cannot be anti to each other they have to be next to each other so it has to be periplanar syn periplanar so what happens you have to rotate so this rotation is very simple this one is there this is a single bond so just rotate 180 degrees how it is this oh is coming out of the board now you have to push it behind the board because uh, uh, silicon is behind the um, screen right so that's why you just rotate it 180 degrees when you rotate 180 degrees you get like this and then when you're rotating what happens to this bond this bond also is rotating 180 degrees so it was like that so it becomes like this so you're getting like this so uh, here it looked like trans but now it is becoming cis so you're getting z product this goes behind then o minus goes and attacks silicon and this comes out and this goes away so happy elimination takes place and you're getting this product b last question for today so um, this one is also very very simple so you are having this um, cyclic ketone cyclohexanone where methyl group is present in the alpha position so that is just to make sure you understand why we are using LDA and why we are not using something like potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. Both would have done same job but only difference is LDA is a very very bulky base very strong base but very very bulky base so it will only attack at the less hindered side so but it is a base so you know if it is uh, if it is ketone ketone has acidic proton you understand so this proton is acidic even this proton is acidic correct why because if you remove proton you get a negative charge that negative charge is getting stabilized this side it can also get stabilized from this side so generally if you would have used some simple base like koh then proton from this side should have been lost why because then you would have got more substituted alkene you would have got alkene like this but for that you need a small base but because we are using a very bulky base it cannot attack a proton here on this carbon it will attack proton from this carbon so that's what is happening see this lda lda is lithium diisopropyl amide so lithium is there like plus 
amide so because uh, nitrogen is forming a bond with metal so it is called as amide bond so it is having negative and two bulky isopropyl groups are there very bulky so it cannot remove this proton because it is very very bulky though it would have given thermodynamically stable enol right so rather it will interact from here it will interact from here and this will go and attack here and this goes up and you are getting less secreted enol but this is kinetically favored because this is very very sterically hindered and then uh, after that uh, PHIC Cl you know Cl is a good leaving group Cl is more electronegative than selenium so it pulls the electron towards itself and therefore chlorine is having negative polarity selenium is having positive polarity and therefore this uh, this bond comes here see compared to oxygen no carbon is more nucleophilic oxygen can stabilize negative charge carbon cannot and therefore bond formation always happens from ox uh, from carbon rarely it happens from oxygen that is exception case we can talk about it later so this goes and attacks here and cl minus leaves and you're getting this bond next step is oxidation so remember when you do oxidation of selenium you are going towards elimination reaction it undergoes sin 1 to elimination reaction so you are uh, oxidizing this with h2o2 and you are getting uh, seleno selenonium ion so you get a uh, double bond o so it is having uh, two canonical structures basically oxygen is way more electronegative than selenium so oxygen takes more electron share so to show like that uh, we have to show through two canonical structures so oxygen is having more electron than selenium it is not meter mm, it does not mean that sunday it remains like this monday it remains like this not like that the real structure is somewhere in between them basically oxygen is having more electron density than selenium so oxygen is having negative polarity and selenium is having positive polarity okay so that's what happens and this uh, uh, o minus is there so it will take uh, the o minus takes proton from the neighboring carbon so to the alpha carbon on which selenium is attached to that proton so alpha to this is also this carbon but here they, there is no proton so this proton is there and they have to be seen periplanar to each other so it comes here it takes away proton and then it comes here and you're getting double bond and this from selenic acid right so this is the answer that is b that's it for today that's it for today thank you very much